South Lake Safari Zoo. Conditions for some of the animals here have been so bad, it's now been ordered to close. The problem is animal welfare. An inspection in January found poor accommodation, uncontrolled breeding and exotic animals living in unheated, rat-infested conditions. The zoo has been dogged with trouble for years. A keeper, 24-year-old Sarah McClay, was killed by a tiger in 2013. The man refused a license to run the zoo today is David Gill, described by inspectors as being desperate to keep control here one way or another. He no longer wants to operate the zoo, but without his license, the new company now running it can't function. So the site is now facing closure, and the animals may need new homes. Danny Savage, BBC News, South Cumbria. Well, let's uh, talk now to Kirsten Pullen, who's Chief Executive of the British and Irish Association of Zoos and Aquariums. And thank you very much for joining us. I understand they're not a member of your organisation, but just tell us if you would, we've heard about some of the things that were going on there. And what do you make of what was happening to these animals? Well, it's clear that there are some very real concerns about the welfare of the animals within the park. There seems to have been some very clear breakdown in management practice that is there that have led to the worst outcomes for some of the animals that have been involved. And that's something that is, is absolutely shocking and very distressing. Both, uh, I, I know the keepers there will be very passionate about the animals they work with, but also from the wider zoo community that works so hard to maintain high standards of welfare um, and activities for conservation within their zoos. Um, and let's just talk about uh, David Gill. He's now handed management of South Lakes over to the Cumbria Zoo Company Limited, but effectively they don't have a license because he's the license holder. So what happens right now? Yes, yeah, so this is the slightly awkward situation that uh, Barrow Council are now in and have to deal with as the licensing authority for the park. Um, the, the decision yesterday, which I, I completely support to refuse David Gill a license, uh, does leave them with looking at what they have to do. Now there is a 28 day period where David Gill can contest that claim and we have to wait and see whether he does. But the council now also have to make a decision on whether the, the new company that want to run the zoo are in fact a capable company of doing so and improving the standards there for those animals. And also the, and the concerning thing at, at this point is that you know there are animals there in the zoo today. Um, can we guarantee that they are being looked after? The keepers will still be in place there, but again, this is where we need to make sure that the standards and the council have to take have to look and make sure that the standards are being raised within the zoo and the animals are getting their needs. This is the difficulty with facing when closure is closure of a zoo, particularly a zoo that does have large animals such as white rhino, as South Lake Safari Park does. It is logistically difficult to move those animals on. So if the zoo does close finally. The zoo community will rally round, look at the breeding programs, look and see if we can find suitable homes for the animals. But there will be a period of time that's needed to put those moves in place. And the zoo will have to manage to operate on some level to meet the needs of those animals until moves to new homes can be found. And I suppose, the, you know, the question is, how did it get to this? I mean, two snow leopard, leopards found partially oh, eaten, no. a pair of squirrel monkeys diagnosed with septicemia. How did it get to this? I mean, are they regularly inspected and, and how could it have happened? Zoo licensing in the UK is run through the local authorities, um, but there are regular inspections. A license is issued for six years after an inspection and then every three years on the in interim there is an inspection to see how they go and experts come in both from the local authority and from DEFRA to check on what's happening in the zoo. And this is part of the process that has led to this uh, investigation into the causes of the deaths of the animals there and the outcome the other day. But I think it is relevant to say that uh, BIASA supports a strong licensing process within the UK. It's very important for us and perhaps it is time to look and review the processes here to see uh, what has happened and whether there can be any tightening up of, of our legislation. And just looking at the death level um, at that, that zoo, I mean, there must be figures for other zoos. Is it, is it very out of sync with other zoos? I think the key thing here is to look at the underlying causes of death. It's very hard to do comparisons across zoo sites because 
Zoos will have different taxa of animals. Some of these animals have a much shorter lifespan, so you may get a higher natural death rate. But the key thing here is to look at the underlying causes of the deaths. And it's very clear that there are some very strong management issues or very definite management issues that have been happening at South Lake Safari Park which have led to compromised welfare for the animals. Okay, Kirsten Pullen from the British and Irish Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Thank you.